Oh, hey, didn't see you guys there. So today, uh, I'm going to talk about a rule that's very dear to my heart. It's the rule of threes uh, in music. Um, and for those of you that's, you know, new to what I do, I just want to, you know, tell you something about this channel, man. Anybody can, uh, anybody can, can give you, uh, the chord of the day, you know, anybody can tell you, okay, today's chord is going to just be this and they can tell you, you know, you know, that's a progression to go with it, but part a big part of this channel is i want to teach musicians how to play music and not just what to play you know what to play is only half the battle music is such a language and you can learn words but you still have to learn how to make a sentence so today we're just going to be working on um different ways we can do that so the rule of threes is simple and this is what it is you there should be three different ways for you to do everything that you do musically um, you know, as a drummer, um, I, there's a couple of drum rolls that I do, but as like a go-to drum roll, I have, you know, just a, a basic, uh, left, left, right, right, left, left, um, uh, off the snare drum and the hi-hat. I have something like that off of the high tom, and I have something like that, uh, between the low tom and the ride cymbal, just go-to moves, uh, that I can do and I can switch out in between and I don't have to think about whether or not that goes um just like in uh in talking if you're holding a conversation with somebody you wouldn't say you know oh how was your day oh well, my day was good all right the next day oh, how was your day today oh my day was good and then the next day oh how, how was your day oh man it, it was it was it was it was good well Using good three times like that doesn't really help the listener, uh, you know, de determine the full meaning of what you're trying to get across. And, and just music is a language. So we want to come up with uh, different adjectives and adverbs musically, uh, and, uh, things that are synony synonymous um, to different things that you're doing to help you get your musical idea across. So here we go. Without further ado. So the most basic view of this concept i'm going to be in a flat today um the most basic view of this concept this is my scale all right a flat is the one b flat is the two all right c is the three c sharp is the four or d flat e flat is the five f is your six g is your seven and a flat is your eight which is your one is the same thing carrying on because you may see some things on the screen your two and your nine which is b flat is going to be the same thing all right your 11 and your four is also the same thing all right which is uh d flat in this situation and uh lastly you may see some um you may see some 13s as well all right and that's going to be the same thing as your six, which is your F. All right. So here you go. So the first thing for all the beginners, because I like this, I like to have something for everybody. OK, um, this the most simplest thing is just your inversions. It's, it's embedded in music. OK, so if you're just starting out, right. And you have your one chord, which consists of your one, your three and your five. All right, you need to know how to do it. And first inversion, second, third. You need to know how to do that. And both hands, you know, you you you, you really you want to have that to assign. So that should be your list of threes. You, um, for every chord. For every chord, you want to go down from your one chord all the way down. I have a list. I have a video on on the chords. So you want to go all the way down on all the chords, and you want to learn those in threes, okay? Now for your intermediate to advanced players, because in a, in a way, we all fall under the same category because 
uh, you never have this thing truly mastered. It's always something that it's always something that you're trying to learn. So for the rest of us, um, I will say intermediate because there is an upper intermediate to advanced level to this. Um, for your intermediate people, you need to have three ways to pronounce your chords and you you want to try to keep it within the same chord chord idea. So I'm going to give you a couple of examples. Um I think uh the, f the four is a good one, right? So this is your four. This is your four chord, all right? Um all right, 4 6 1. So if I if I have a musical idea that goes 1 Two, three, four. All right. All right. If I have that, what are some things that I can do so I don't have to just keep saying, you know? Right. Okay. So, um, for me, first thing that I I like to do, uh, put the one over it. So I got. Sometimes I add that six. All right. And all that is, is basically a, a one over four. So that's the first thing I do. All right. Um, here's something else that I can do. Uh, I can do this uh, suspended idea right here. So this is an F sus four, all right? Because it resolves to that. It's F major, all right? So I can say. All right? And sometimes you may see me add uh, the perfect fifth in the bass, okay? It adds a thickness, all right? So you can, you can play with that. Um, I'll definitely be going into some details about these chords in a later video. But right now I'm trying to, like I said, you can get chords from anywhere. Right now I'm trying to give you an idea because you can use literally anything. Here's another um, concept. for this, this is intermediate still, okay, for the four. All right. All right, that time I just put the five over it. You know, okay. Um, here's another idea that you can use, it's sort of a bonus. Okay, um, you can do this right here. All right, I use the two. And if you watch some of my videos before, you know what works on the four works on the one because these are both essentially major seven chords, right? So they have the same structure. If you look at it, uh, here's there's your complete four. And then if you do the one the same way. So let's move on to something else. Um, what's another one? The five. Five is a good one because the five, for those of us just trying to learn to play by ear, takes us home. All right. So the five really takes us home. It it, it really creates that tension um, to present a resolve. And once you understand that, then you know that anything that you use to resolve you to the one is just a substitution for the five, no matter what it is. Okay. So. And that's without thinking about whether it's tritone substitution or or minor third substitution or or uh you know circle of field substitution or anything like that, right? Negative harmony, uh anything like that. If it if it creates tension that resolves directly to the one, it's a substitution for the five, okay? I said it again slowly. If it creates a tension that resolves to the one, then it is a five. Okay. So 
So here's something for the five, right? I use the same premise. Five one. You hear that? Five one. Five one. Right. So here's some different things that we can use for that. Or that I, I like to use. And this is just giving you ideas. Ready? First thing, four over five. That's just a simple four over five. All right. Most everybody was kind of taught that. I was taught that as that being my encore chord. All right. Um, here's another one, kind of shooting off the hip here. All right. So what I did just then was a minor four. You'll, look, you'll see it says C sharp minor over E. But if I just put the C sharp in the bass, it becomes just a regular C sharp minor. Okay. It's just saying over E because it's representing that inversion and I don't have a key enter. Okay. Now when I put this, this bass in, it becomes a E flat seven sus flat sus four flat nine. And it just goes to show you how complicated chords can get if you don't understand it, right? You know. So if you see a video on YouTube, hey, we're today we're talking about the E flat, um, seven sus four flat nine chord. Know what you're looking at. You see what I'm saying? That's just minor four. Major one, minor four, major one, minor four, resolve one. All right. Now, okay, let's 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 take it up just a little bit for the intermediate. All right. Remember, I say anything that resolves tension, uh, anything that brings tension to resolve to the one, it can be used as a five. Okay. So, let's show you another one. Ready? So all that was is an A9-13. Now for you uh, theorists out there, or if you want to be theorists, you know, people who want to get into it, I didn't mean that in a negative way. Um, when you see, when you see a nine, then understand that in order for that to be present in that context, then it is a dominant seven. All right, so. Here's an A, all right, which is just a flat two in this case, major flat two. I'm gonna add, here's my A scale. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, I'm gonna add the flat seven. All right, now I get an A seven, all right. Now, I'm gonna add this nine. Alright. If I take away the seven, notice it just says add two. But if I add the seven, because if you take away the seven, you just playing this. Right. So in so many inversions. And even if you wanted to do the proper version of the chord, you know, right? You know. It all works too. Whatever resolves tension for you, you know, it's a lot of things that that can that can bring tension. Okay. Um. So I mean. I think it's time to, to to work on some more uh some some advanced stuff, okay? So, all right, let's check some things out. Now, when you're an advanced player, 
you pr- you pretty much have different nuances and things like that already. So you're at the point now where you know you you're probably already you're probably already substituting pretty well. You need to worry about three different ways, and this is important, three different ways to get to your chords, all right? So in this sense, I had this progression. All right? So that can be way one. Here's another way, see? All right? That's a five one four based off of a two five one in the key of C uh, sharp or D flat. So if we were in, and advanced people know where I'm at with this. If we were in C sharp D flat, this would be a two five one. So so you have. I probably shouldn't have added that too. Let's see. All right. Uh, here's another one. Um, really cool one. Really dark. All right. That's just um, just a D minor. D minor nine because I'm adding so much stuff to it, but at its root, it's just that's that's really what I'm doing. Da, da. So a lot of different things you can do with that D. I'm just kind of going off the cuff. Yeah, that's kind of resembles what I did with the uh, going to the one. All right. So you have to have different ways to get to uh, where you're going, you know. And it's important to, you know, make sure that you're keeping the integrity of the song. But if, you know, if, if something happens, especially in that live atmosphere, you want to be able to embody the spontaneousness of the song and the feeling that's, that's happening. Um, let's see if I can give you all something else, man. Um, let's see. Going to the one. All right, so this is this is some more uh, advanced stuff. All right, going to the one. Now, I wasn't really going to talk about this, but let's do it. You know, you hear? So, all right. So instead of using the five, let's substitute the five with three different progressions. Okay. All right. Here's progression one. So instead of saying, you say, all right, here's another one. So we got a major two, which should be a B flat major, a dominant five, so it's an E flat dominant seven. All right, an A flat major seven. Um, let's see, here's, an, here's, a here's another one, let's see, that one was just, 
this is kind of really advanced tricky stuff dealing with negative harmony here so we got a, a, a sort of a B dominant and I took that down the circle of fourths all right to a F sharp dominant and then brought that up to a you know your, your A major A flat major chord of your choosing all right um here's a really popular one That was just me sort of mixing up. Mixing up some things. But um, I, I hope you get the point, man. Learn your craft in, in threes, and it'll really do you justice. And here's the, here's the more top level. Learn how to play each song three different ways, okay? So don't just learn, um, especially when you're talking about uh, churching and Especially when you're talking about being a performing musician, don't just learn it one way and be okay with it. Learn learn different things that may not even work for other songs, and you'll find out that it will work. But learn different things that you don't even feel like you'll learn it'll work for other songs, uh, for songs, and you know, just make it your own, make it your own creation. Come up with about three three different creations of your own. And uh, that can really help to bring your music to life. It can really help you stand apart. You know, I, as a musician, nothing's worse than when you learn that, oh, man, he's just doing that over and over. You know, oh, there go that part where he does that thing again. Okay. But, you know, really keep your your listener, um, you know, at edge musically in a good way. All right. All right. Well, it's been real, you guys. Till next time.